There are only about 20 master potters left in South Korea who make this traditional clay pot. At 58, Jin Yu Ho is the youngest of them. This is Ongi, and people have been using it for thousands of years to store and ferment staple Korean foods, like kimchi. But it takes weeks to finish a single pot, and they can cost up to $800. So fewer people are buying them, instead opting for cheaper, mass-produced plastic and glass containers. Even Jingyu's father, who practiced the craft for decades, lost hope. We visited Jingyu's workshop in Ulsan, South Korea, to learn how this craft that has lasted for millennia is still standing. Ongi is made from iron-rich mud that Jingyu gets from nearby fields. It has to sit and dry for a year before he starts working with it. The clay has to have the right consistency, not too fine and a little coarse. Jingyu uses this machine to form the coils. In the past, he used to mold the clay with his hands and feet, a long and exhausting process. But a knee injury forced him to stop. First, he puts down a fine powder of clay to prevent the pot from sticking to the wheel. He pounds the clay with this wooden tool called the pang mangyi, making sure to remove all of the air bubbles. He presses the cloth to even out the clay and uses the pang mangyi again. Next, he carves out a perfect circle as a base for the vessel. Jingyu starts building the walls of the pot using this ancient coiling technique called tariom. Each step builds on the next. Jingyu visualizes the ongi long before he sees it in clay form. After 42 years, making ongi has become second nature. Jingyu is aware of every detail. Even the speed of the wheel is critical. Like many onki potters, he makes his own tools that are custom fit to his hands. He uses a paddle called a sure and this stamp-like tool called a toge to shape the pot. He listens carefully to determine the right thickness. The paddle also removes any trapped air and helps condense the clay. And he feels the clay as he works. If it's too wet, he waits for it to dry. Otherwise, the piece can collapse. At various stages, a blowtorch blasts heat to help dry the clay. The top coil is the thickest. The extra clay forms the neck of the pot. He applies a wet strip of leather to soften the clay and shape the rim, then scrapes the walls to make them thinner. Next, he designs the pot. For this ongi, Jingyu opts for lines and a wavy pattern. They use a cloth sling to carefully transfer the pot off the wheel. Jingyu will dry it under the sun for no more than six hours. Any longer can crack or warp the clay. The ongi will finish drying in the shade for up to 20 days. Archaeological records show that ongi has been around since 5000 BC. It kept foods cool in the summer months and helped prevent them from freezing in the winter. 
Koreans found that onggi was ideal for fermentation because of its microporous surface that allows the food to breathe. But all this changed in the 20th century with the arrival of industrialization and refrigeration. In the following years, other materials like plastic and glass further decreased the need for traditional clay pots. But for Jin Gyu, onggi is about preserving history. It took him 10 years to learn the craft. And he says that commitment is what pushes many people away. Despite that, he established his own workshop more than 20 years ago and teaches the craft all over the world. After the ongi is dry, it's time for glazing. He sieves the glaze to remove any rocks and debris then blends the mixture before dipping the dry pots. The glaze is made of red clay, tree ashes, and composted leaves, also known as leaf mold. Later in the firing process, this glaze will form tiny holes that make ongi breathable, also giving each piece a unique coloring, depending on the ratio of the mix. The glazed ongi must then dry another 10 days before the next step, firing. Jingyu's father built this kiln over 30 years ago. It took him more than three months. Jingyu starts by removing the bricks that cover the opening. When the kiln is unused, the mouth of each chamber is covered to keep the cold out. Traditional wood-burning kilns like this can reach over 80 feet in length. They include multiple rooms and can fire a thousand pots in one go. Jingyu first builds a small bonfire to remove any humidity in the kiln. Firing glazed ongi requires temperatures of over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but they must build the heat slowly. He and his staff monitor the kiln for five days straight, keeping watch so the fires don't extinguish. Despite their efforts, only half of the pieces survive. Depending on where they're placed, they could be fired too much or not enough. It takes five more days for the pieces to completely cool down. And the ongi are finally finished after a month of shaping, drying, glazing, and firing. Prices at Jin Yu's workshop range from 80 to over $800. And he's always reinventing his business. He experiments with smaller, thinner ongi that are still strong and durable, hoping to break assumptions that these jars are heavy and crude. Jingyu is determined to break another misconception, that ongi belongs to the past. By continuing the craft, he hopes that others will carry on the tradition. Jingyu 할수 있을 때까지는 끝까지 하려고 했어요.